Ezekiel chapter 38, Prophecy Against Gog. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, in the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshia and Tubil, and prophesy against him, and say, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief priests of Mishiach and Tubu, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thy enemies, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all of his bands, the house of Talgrama of the north borders, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, that they shall dwell safely all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus said the Lord God, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into my, thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, and I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarsa, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take, to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods? take a great spoil? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto God, Thus said the Lord God, In that day when my people of Israel dwell it safely, shalt thou not know it. And thou shalt come from my, thy place, out of thy, the north parts. Thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me, when I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. Thus said the Lord God, Art thou be of whom? I have spoken in old time by my servants and prophets of Israel, 
which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them. And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, said the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken, surely in the, that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field are all creeping things that, that creep upon the earth, and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. And the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, said the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother, and I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am the Lord. Chapter 39 Therefore, though son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshiach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, will cause thee to come up from the north parts, will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite thou bow out of thy left hand and will sh cause thy arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Those shall fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, said the Lord God. And I will send a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly on the, in the isles. And they shall know that I am the Lord. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name any more. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of in Israel. Behold, it is come, it is done, said the Lord God. This is the day there whereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth, and shall set on fire, and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers. The, bow, the bows and the arrows and the hand staves and the spears and they shall burn them with fire seven years so that they shall take no wood out of the field neither cut down any out of the forest for they shall burn the weapons with fire and they shall spoil those that spoiled them, and robbed those that robbed them, said the Lord God. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto I, that I will give unto Gog, Gog a place there of graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers. And there shall they bury Gog and all his multitude, and they shall call it 
the valley of Hamangog. And the seven months shall the house of Israel be bearing of them, that they may cleanse the land. Yes, all the people of the land shall bury them, and it shall come be, and it shall, and it shall be to them. I renown that they, that I shall be glorified, said the Lord God, and they shall se sever out men to, of continual employment, passing through the land to bury with the passengers, those that remain upon the face of the earth, to cleanse it after the end of seven months shall they search. And the passengers that pass through the land, when any see it a man's bones, then shall he set up a sign by it <coughs> till the barriers have buried in it in the valley of Hamangog and also the name of the city shall be Hammon thus shall they cleanse the land and though son of man thus said the Lord God speak unto every feathered fowl to every beast of the field assemble yourselves and Come, gather yourselves on every side of my sacrifice, that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, all of them, fatlings of Bashan and ye shall eat fat till ye be full and drink blood till ye be drunken of my sacrifice which I have sacrificed for you thus thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots with mighty men and with all men of war said the Lord God and I shall set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed in my hand that I have laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am Lord their God from that day and that day forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from men and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword, according to their uncleanliness and according to their transgressions. Have I done it unto them and hid my face from them? The Lord will restore Israel. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob, and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, and will be jealous for my holy name. After that, they have borne their shame, and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me, when they dwell safely in their land, and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen but I have gathered them unto their own land and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, said the Lord God. Chapter 40, Vision of the New Temple. In the five and twentieth year of our captivity, the beginning of the year in the 
the 10th day of the month and 14 years after that the city was smitten. In the self same day, the hand of the Lord was on me and brought me thither. In the visions of God brought he me unto the land of Israel and set me apart upon a very high mountain by which was as the frame of a city on south. And he brought me thither, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass, with a line of flax in his hand, and a measuring reed he stood in the gate. And the man said, and then the man said unto me, Son of man, behold with thy eyes, and hear with the e thine ears and set thine heart upon all that I will show thee, for to the intent that I might show them. Unto thee art thou brought hither. Declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel, the east gate to the outer court. And behold, a wall on the outside of the house round about, and in the man's hand a measuring reed of six cubits long by the cubit, and a hand breaded. So he measured the breadth of the building, one reed, and the height, one reed. Then came he unto the gate, which looketh toward the east, and went up the stairs thereof, and measured the threshold of the gate, which was one reed broad, and the other threshold of the gate, which was one reed broad. And every little chamber was one reed long, and one reed broad. And between the little chambers were five cubits, and the threshold of the gate by the porch of the gate was within was one reed. He measured also the porch of the gate within one reed, then measured ye the porch of the gate, eight cubits, and the post thereof, two cubits, and the porch of the gate was inward. And the little chambers of the gate eastward were three on this side and three on that side. They were, they three were of one measure, and the post had one measure, on this side and on that side. And he measured the breadth of the entry of the gate, ten cubits, and the length of the gate, thirteen cubits. The space also before the little chambers was one cubit on this side. And the space was one cubit on that side. And the little chambers were six cubits on this side, and six cubits on that side. And he measured the breadth of the entry of the gate, ten cubits, and the length of the gate, thirteen cubits. The space also before the little chambers was one cubit on this side, and the space was one cubit on that side. And the little chambers were six cubits on this side, and six cubits on that side. He measured then the gate from the roof of one little chamber to the roof of another. The breadth was five and twenty cubits door against door. He made also posts of three score cubits, even on into the post of the court round about the gate. And from the face of the gate of the entrance unto the face of the porch of the inner gate were fifty cubits. And there were narrow windows to the little chambers, to their posts within the gate, round about, and likewise to the arches and windows were round about inward and open. Each post were palm trees. The outer court then brought he me into the outward court, though there were chambers, 
and a pavement made for the court around about 30 chambers were upon the pavement and the pavement by the side of the gates over against the length of the gates was the lower pavement. Then he measured the breadth from the forefront of the lower gate onto the forefront of the inner court without a hundred cubits eastward and northward. The north gate and the gate of the outward court that looked toward the north. He measured the length thereof and the breadth thereof. And the little chambers thereof were three on this side and three on that side and the cubits thereof and the arches thereof were after the measure of the first gate. The length thereof was 50 cubits and the breadth, breadth five and 20 cubits. And their windows and their arches and their palm trees were after the measure of the gate that looked toward the east and they went up onto it by seven steps. And the arches thereof were before them. And the gate of the inner court was over against the gate toward the north and toward the east. And he measured from gate to gate a hundred cubits. The south gate after that he brought me toward the south, and behold a gate toward the south. And he measured the posts thereof and the arches thereof according to these measures. And there were windows in it and in the arches thereof round about, like those windows. The length was fifty cubits and the bread of life five and twenty cubits and there were seven steps to go up to it and the arches thereof were before them and it had palm trees one on this side and another on that side upon the post thereof and there was a gate in the inner court toward the south and he measured from gate to gate towards toward the south a hundred cubits, the inner court. And he brought me to the inner court by the south gate, and he measured the south gate according to these measures. And the little chambers thereof, and the posts thereof, and the arches thereof according to these measures. And there were windows in it, and in the arches thereof, round about. It was 50 cubits long, and 5 and 20 cubits broad. And the arches round about were 5 and 20 cubits long, and 5 cubits broad. And the arches thereof were Toward the utter court and palm trees were upon the post thereof, and the going up to it had eight steps. And he brought me to into the inner court toward the east, and he measured the gate according to these measures. And the little chambers thereof and the post thereof and the arches thereof were according to these measures. And there were windows therein, and in the arches thereof round about it. It was 50 cubits long and five and 20 cubits broad. And the, and the arches thereof were toward the outward court. And the palm trees were upon the post thereof on this side and on that side and the going up to it had eight steps 
and he brought me to the north gate and measured it according to these measures. The little chambers thereof, the posts thereof, the arches thereof, the windows to, to it round about. The length was 50 cubits and the thread 5 and 20 cubits. And the posts thereof were toward the utter court, and palm trees were upon the posts thereof, on this side and on that side, and the going up to it had eight steps. And the chambers and the entries thereof were by the posts of the gates. They washed the burnt offering. And in the porch of the gate were two tables on this side and two tables on that side to slay there, therein the burnt offering and the sin offering and the trespass offering. And at the side without as one goeth up to the entry of north gate where two tables and on the other side which was at the porch of the gate were two tables four tables were on this side and four tables on that side by the side of the gate eight tables were upon they slew their sacrifices and the four tables were hewn stone for burnt offering of a cubit and half long and a, cu and a cubit and half broad, one cupid high, where, where of a, also they laid the instruments wherewith they slew the burnt offering and the sacrifice. And within were hooks, a hand broad, fastened round about, and upon the tables was the flesh of the offering. Chambers for the priests. And without the inner gate were the chambers of the singers in the inner court, which was at the side of the north gate, and their prospect was toward the south, one at the side of the east gate having prospect toward the north. And he said unto me, This, this chamber whose prospect is toward the south is for the priests the keepers of the charge of the house and the chamber whose prospect is toward the north is for the priests the keepers of the charge of the altar these are the sons of Zadok among the sons of Levi which come near to the Lord to minister among them so he measured the court a hundred cubits long and a hundred cubits broad or square, and the altar that was before the house, the vestibule of the temple. And he brought me to the porch of the house and measured each post of the porch, five cubits on this side and five cubits on that side. And the brethren of the gate was three cubits on this side and three cubits on that side. The length, the length of the porch was 20 cubits and the uh, brethren 11 cubits and he brought me by the steps whereby they went up to it. And there were pillars by the posts, one on this side and another on that side. The inner temple. Afterward, he brought me to the temple and measured the post six cubits broad on one side and six cubits broad on the other side, which was the breadth of the tabernacle. And the breadth of the door was 10 cubits and the sides of the door were five cubits on one side and five cubits on the other side. And he measured the length thereof, forty cubits, and the brethren twenty cubits. Then went he inward, and measured the post of the door, two cubits, the door six cubits, and the brethren of the door, seven cubits. 
So he measured the length thereof, 20 cubits, and the breadth, 20 cubits before the temple. And he said unto me, This is the most holy place. And he, and he measured the wall of the house, six cubits, and the breadth of every side chamber, four cubits, round about the house on every side. And the side chambers were the three, one over another, and thirty in order, and they entered into the wall, which was of the house of for the side chambers, round about that they might have to hold, but they had not hold in the wall of the house. And there was an enlarging and a winding about still upward in the side chambers, for the winding about of the house went still upward round about the house. There, therefore, the brethren of the house was still upward, and so increased from the lowest chamber to the highest by the mist. I saw also the height of the house round about, the foundations of the side chambers were all full reed of six great cubits. The thickness of the wall, which was for the side chamber without, was five cubits, that which was left but was the place of the side chambers that were within. And between the chambers was the wideness of the twenty cubits round about the house of every side. And the doors of the side chambers were toward the place that was left one door toward the north, and another door toward the south, and the brethren of the place that was left was five cubits round about. Now the building that was before the separate place at the end toward the west was seventy cubits broad, and the wall of the building was five cubits thick round about, and the length thereof ninety cubits. So he measured the house an hundred cubits long, and the separate place, and the building with the walls thereof, an hundred cubits long. Also the bread breadth of the face of the house, and of the separate place toward the east, a hundred cubits. And he measured the length of the building over against a separate place which was behind it, and the ga galleries thereof on one side and on the other side, a hundred cubits, with the inner temple and the porches of the court, the doorposts and the narrow windows, and the galleries round about on their three stories over against the door she silent the wood around about and from the ground up to the windows and the windows were covered to that above the door even unto the inner house and without and by all the wall round about within and without by measure and it was made by with cherubims and palm trees, so that a palm tree was between a cherubim and a cherubim, and every cherubim had two faces, so that the face of a man was toward the palm tree on one side, and the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. It was made through all the house round about. From the ground unto above, the door were cherubims and palm trees made and on the wall of the temple. 
The posts of the temple were squared, and the face of the sanctuary, the appearance of the one, as the appearance of the other. The altar of wood was three cubits high, and the length thereof two cubits, and the cubits thereof, and the length thereof, and the walls thereof were of wood. And he said unto me, This is the table that is before the Lord. And the temple and the sanctuary had two doors, and the doors that had, that had two leaves apiece, two turning leaves, two leaves for the one door, and two leaves for the other door. And there were made on them, on the doors of the temple, cherubims and palm trees, like as were made upon the walls. And there were thick planks upon the face of the porch without. And there were narrow windows and palm trees on the one side and on the other side, on the sides on the porch, and upon the sides of the house and thick planks. Chapter 42 The Temple's Chambers Then he brought me forth into the utter court, the way toward the north, and he brought me into the chamber that was over against the separate place in which was before the building toward the north. Before the length of a hundred cubits was the north door, and the breadth was fifty cubits. Over against the twenty cubits which were for the inner court, and over against the pavement which was for the outer court, was gallery against gallery in three stories. And before the chambers was a walk of ten cubits breaded inward, a way of one cubit, and their doors toward the north. Now the upper chambers were shorter, for the galleries were higher than the, these, than the lower, and then the middlemost of the building. For they were in the three stories, but had no not pillars, as the pillars of the courts, therefore the building was straightened more than the lowest and the middle, middlemost from the ground. And the wall that was without over against the chambers toward the outer court on the forepart of the chambers. The length thereof was fifty cubits. For the length of the chambers that were in the utter court was fifty cubits. And lo, before the temple were a hundred cubits. And from under these chambers was the entry on the east side, and the one goeth unto them from the outer court. The chambers were in the thickness of the wall of the court toward the east, over against the separate place and over against the building. And the way before them was like the appearance of the chambers, which were toward the north, as long as they and as broad as they and all their goings out were both according to their fashion according to their doors and according to the doors of the chambers that were toward the south was a door in the head of the way even the way directly before the wall toward the east as one entered into them then said on he unto me the north chambers and the south chambers which are before the separate place, they be holy chambers, where the priests that approach unto the Lord shall eat the most holy things. There shall they lay the most holy things, and the meat offering, and the sin offering, and the trespass offering, for the place is holy. 
When the priests enter therein, then shall they not go out of the holy place into the outer court, but there shall they shall lay their garments wherein they minister. For they are holy, and they shall put on other garments, and shall approach to those things which are for the people. Now when he had made an end of measuring the inner house, he brought me forth toward the gate whose prospect is toward the east, and measured it round about. He measured the east side with the measuring reed, five hundred reeds, with the measuring reed round about. He measured the north side five hundred reeds with the measuring reed round about. He measured the south side five hundred reeds with measuring reed. He turned about to the west side and measured five hundred reeds with the measuring reed. He measured it by four sides. He had a wall round about 500 reeds long and 500 broad to make a separate between the sanctuary and the profane place. Ezekiel chapter 43 The glory of the Lord fills the temple. Afterward he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looked toward the east. And behold, the glory of the the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the visions that I saw by the river Shebar, and I fell upon my face. And the glory of the Lord came unto the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house and the man stood by me, and he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. And my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither they nor their kings by their whoredom, nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. In their setting of their threshold, by my thresholds, and their posts by my posts, and the wall between me and them, they have, they have even defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed their wherefore I have consumed them in my anger. Now let them put away the whoredom and the carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Though son of man, show the house to the, is the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of the iniquities, and let them measure the pattern. And if they be ashamed of all that they have done, show them the form of the house, and the fashion thereof, and the goings out thereof, and the comings of thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the ordinance thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the Jews thereof, no, and all the laws thereof, and write it in their sight, that they may keep the whole form therefore, and all the ordinance thereof, and do them. This is the law of the house. Upon 
the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house, the altar, and these are the measures of the altar after the cubits. The cubit is a cubit, and the hand breaded even the bottom shall be a cubit, and the bread a cubit, and the border thereof by the edge thereof round about shall be a span. And this shall be the higher place of the altar. And from the bottom upon the ground, even to the lower settle, shall be two cubits, and the breaded one cubit. And from the lesser settle, even to the greater settle, shall be four cubits, and the bread one cubit. So the altar shall be four cubits, and from the altar and upward shall be four horns. And the altar shall be twelve cubits along, along twelve broad, broad square, and the four square thereof. And the saddle shall be fourteen cubits long, and fourteen broad, and the four squares thereof. And the border about it shall be half a cubit, and the bottom thereof shall be a cubit about. And his, and his stairs shall look toward the east. And he shall unto me, Son of man, thus said the Lord God, These are the ordinances of the altar, in that day when they shall make it to offer burnt offerings thereon and to sprinkle blood therein. And thou shalt give to the priests and the, Le the Levites that be of seed of Zadok, which approached unto me to minister unto me, said the Lord God, a young bullock for a sin offering. And thou shalt take of the blood thereof and put it on the foreign horns of it, and on the four corners of the saddle and upon the border round about, thus shalt thou cleanse the purge and purge it. Thou shalt take the bullock also of the sin offering, and he shall burn it in the appointed place of the house without the sanctuary. And on the second day, thou shalt offer a kid of the goats without blemish, for sin offering, and they shall cleanse the altar as they did cleanse it, without the bullock. When thou hast made an end to cleansing it, thou shalt offer a young bullock without a blemish, and a ram out of the flock without blemish. And thou shalt offer them before the Lord, and the priest shall cast, shall cast, shall cast salt upon them and they shall offer them for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Seven days shall thou prepare every day a goat for a sin offering. They shall also prepare a young bullock and a ram out of the flock without blemish. Seven days shall they purge the altar and purify it, and they shall consecrate themselves. And when these days are expired, it shall be that upon the eighth day and so for, forward, the priest shall make your burnt offerings upon the altar, and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, said the Lord God. Chapter 44 The Gate for the Prince Then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, which looked toward the east, and it was shut. Then said the Lord unto me, the gate shall be shut, it shall not be open, and no man shall enter it by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, had entered, it, had entered in by it, therefore it shall be shut. It is for the prince, the prince, he shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate, and shall go out by the way of 
the same. Then brought he me the way of the north gate before the house. And I looked, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord, and I fell upon my face. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well, and behold with thy eyes, and hear with thy ears all that I say unto the, thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord, and all the laws thereof, and mark well the entering in of the house with every going forth of the sanctuary. And thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, thus said the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, let us suffice you to all your abominations. If that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood that they have broken by covenant because of all your abominations. And ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Thus said the Lord God, no stranger uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. And the Levites that are gone away from me, when Israel went astray, when which went astray away from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people. They shall stand before them to minister unto them. Because they ministered unto them before their idols and caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity, therefore have I lifted up my hand against them said the Lord God, and they shall bear their iniquity. And they shall not come near to unto me to do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place, but they shall bear their shame and their abominations, which they have committed. But I will make them keepers of the charge of the house for all the service thereof and for all that shall be done therein. Rules for Lev Levitical priests. But the priests of the Levites, the sons of Zodak, that kept the charge of my sanctuary, when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me. They shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, said the Lord God. They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. And it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they, sh they shall be clothed with linen garments, and no wool shall come upon them, whiles they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. They shall have linen bonnets upon their heads, and shall have linen breeches upon their loins. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causes sweat. And when they go forth into the utter court, even on into the utter court to the people, they shall put off their garments wherein they ministered and laid them in the holy chambers. And they shall put on their other garments and 
they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. Neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer their locks to grow long. They sh shall only pull their heads. Neither shall any priest drink wine when they enter into the inner court. Neither shall they take for their wives a widow, nor her that is put away. But they shall take ma maidens of the seed of the house of Israel, or a widow that had a priest before. They shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. And in controversy they shall stand in judgment, and they shall judge it according to my judgment, and they shall keep my laws and my statutes. statutes. In all my assemblies, and they shall hallow my Sabbaths. And they shall come at no dead person to defile themselves, but for father, for mother, or for son, or for daughter, for brother, or for sister that had had no husband. They may defile themselves, and after he is cleansed, they shall reckon unto him seven days. And in the day that he goeth into the sanctuary, unto the inner court, to minister in the sanctuary, he shall offer his sin offering, said the Lord God. And it shall be unto them for an inheritance. I am their inheritance, and ye shall give them no possession in Israel. I am their possession. They shall eat the meat offering and the sin offering and the trespass offering and every dedicated thing in Israel shall be theirs. And the first of all, the first fruits of all things and every oblation of all, of every sort of your oblations shall be the priests. Ye shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough that he may cause the blessing to rest in thy house. The priest shall not eat of anything that is dead of itself or torn, whether it be fowl or beast. Chapter 45 The Holy District Moreover, when ye shall divide by lot the land of for inheritance, ye shall offer an oblation unto the Lord, a holy portion of the land. The length shall be the length of five and twenty thousand reeds, and the breadth shall be thousand, ten thousand. This shall be holy in all the borders thereof round about. Of this there shall be for the sanctuary five hundred in length, with five hundred in breadth, square round about and fifty cubits round about for the suburbs thereof. And of this measure shalt thou measure the length of five and twenty thousand, and the breadth of ten thousand. In it shall be the sanctuary and the most holy place. The holy portion of the land shall be for the priests the ministers of the sanctuary, which shall come near to minister unto the Lord. And it shall be a place for their houses, and holy place for the sanctuary. And five and twenty thousand of length, and ten thousand of brethren, shall also the Levites, the ministers of the house, have for themselves for a possession for twenty chambers. And ye shall appoint the possession of the city five thousand broad and five twenty thousand long over against the oblation of the holy portion. It shall be for the whole house of Israel, the portion for the prince. And a portion shall be for the prince on one side and on 
the other side of the oblation of the holy portion and of the possession of the city before the oblation of a holy portion and before the possession of the city. From the west side westward and from the east side eastward and the length shall be over against one of the portions from the west border unto the east border. In the land shall be his possession is in Israel and my princes shall no more oppress my people and the rest of the land shall they give to the house of Israel according to their tribes. Thus said the Lord God, let it suffice you. O princes of Israel, remove violence and spoil and execute judgment and justice. Take away your extations ex 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 from my people, said the Lord God. Ye shall have just balances and a just ephah and a just bath. The ephah and the bath shall be one measure that the bath may contain the tenth part of a homer and the ephah the tenth part of an homer. The measure thereof shall be after the homer and the shekel shall be 20 jeras, 20 shekels, 5 and 20 shekels, 15 shekels shall be your manna. This is the oblation that ye shall offer, the sixth part of the ephah of a homer of wheat. And ye shall give the sixth part of a ephah of homer of barley. Concerning the ordinance of oil, the bath of oil ye shall offer, ten part of a bath out of a core, which is a homer, ten baths for ten baths, or are a homer, and one lamb out of the flock, out of two hundred, out of the fat pastures of Israel, for a meat offering, and for a burnt offering, and for peace offerings, to make reconciliation, for them, said the Lord God. All the people of the land shall give this oblation for the prince in Israel, and it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings, and meat offerings, and drink offerings, and the feasts in the new moons, and in the Sabbath, in all solemnities of the house of Israel. He shall prepare the sin offering, and the meat offering, and the burnt offering, and the peace offerings, to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. Thus said the Lord God, In the first month, in the first day of the month, thou shalt take a young bullock without blemish, and cleanse the sanctuary. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering and put it upon the post of the house and upon the four corners of the settle of the altar and upon the post of the gate of the inner court and so thou shalt do the seventh day of the month for everyone that heir it and for them that is simple so shall ye reconcile the house In the first month, in the fourteenth day of the month, ye shall have the Passover, a feast of seven days. Unleavened bread shall be eaten. And upon that day shall the prince prepare for himself and for all the people of the land a bullock for a sin offering. In seven days of the feast, ye shall prepare a burnt offering for the Lord, seven bullocks and seven rams without blemish, daily the seven days, a kid of the goats daily for a sin offering. And he shall prepare a meat offering of an ephra for a bullock and an ephra for a ram and a hint of oil for an ephra. In the seventh month, in the fifteenth day, 
of the month shall he do the like of in the feast of the seven days according to the sin offering according to the burnt offering and according to the meat offering and according to the oil chapter 46 the prince of the fe and the feasts thus said the lord god the gate of the inner court that looked toward the east shall be shut the six working days but in on the sabbath it shall be open and in the day of the new moon it shall be open and the prince shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate without and shall stand by the post of the gate and the priest shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings and he shall worship at the threshold of the gate then he shall go forth but the gate shall not be shut until the evening likewise the people of the land shall worship at the door of the gate before the Lord in the Sabbath and in the new moons, and the burnt offering that the prince shall offer unto the Lord. In the Sabbath day shall be six lambs without blemish, and a ram without blemish. And the meat offering shall be Ephraim for a ram, and the meat offering for the lambs, as he shall be able to give a hint of oil to an ephah. And in the day of the new moon it shall be a young bullock without blemish, and six lambs, and a ram. They shall be without blemish, and he shall prepare a meat offering, an ephah for a bullock, and an ephah for a ram. And for the lambs, according to his hand, shall attain unto a hin of oil to an ephah. And when the prince shall enter, he shall go in by the way of the porch of that gate, and he shall go forth by the way thereof. But when the people of the land shall come before the Lord in the solemn feast, he that entereth in by the way of the north gate to worship shall go out by the way of the south gate and he that entered by the way of the south gate shall go forth by the way of the north gate he shall not return by the way of the gate whereby he came in but shall go forth over against it and the prince in the midst of them then they go in shall go in and when they go forth shall go forth and in the feast and in the solemnize, the meat offering shall be Ephra to the bullock, and the Ephra to a ram and to the lambs, as he is able to give an hin of oil to an Ephra. Now when the prince shall prepare a voluntary burnt offering, or peace offerings voluntary unto the Lord, one shall then open them the gate that looketh toward the east, and he shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings as he did on the Sabbath day. Then he shall go forth, and after his going forth, one shall shut the gate. Thou shalt daily prepare a burnt offering unto the Lord of a lamb, of the first year without blemish thou shalt prepare it every morning and thou shalt prepare a meat offering for it every morning and six part of an ephra and the third part of an hin of oil to temper with the fine flour, fl fine flour a meat offering continually by a perpetual ordinance unto the Lord thus said they prepare the lamb and the meat offering and the oil every morning for a continual burnt offering and thus said the Lord God if the prince 
give a gift unto any of his sons, the inheritance thereof shall be his sons. It shall be their possession by inheritance. But if he give a gift of his inheritance to one of his servants, then it shall be his to the year of liberty after it shall return to the prince but his inheritance shall be his sons for them moreover the prince shall not take of the people's inheritance by oppression to thrust them out of their possession but he shall give his sons inheritance out of his own possession that my people be not scattered every man from his possession, boiling places for offerings. After he brought me through the entry, which was at the side of the gate, into the holy chambers of the priests, which looked toward the north, and behold, there was a place on the two sides westward. Then said he unto me, This is the place where the priest shall boil the trespass offering and the sin offering where they shall bake the meat offering that they bear them not on not out onto the other court to sanctify the people then he brought me forth into the other court and caused me to pass by the four corners of the court and behold in every corner of the court there was a court in the four corners of the court there were courts joined of 40 cubits long and 30, 30 broad. These four corners were of one measure, and there was a row of building round about in them. Round about them four, and it was made with boiling points, places, under the rows round about. Then said he unto me, These are the places of them that boil. There the ministers of the house shall boil the sacrifice of the people. Chapter 47 Water flowing from the temple. Afterward he brought me again into the door of the house. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward, for the forefront of the house stood toward the east. And the waters came down from under from the right hand of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought me he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the other gate, by the way that looked eastward. And behold, there ran out the waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the water. The waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterward, he measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass over for the waters were risen waters to swim in a river that could not be over that be passed over and he said unto me son of man has thou seen this then he brought me and caused me to return to the bank of the river now when i had returned behold at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country, and go down into the desert, and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, and the water shall be healed. 
And it shall come to pass that every thing that liveth which moved whithersoever the river shall come, shall live, and there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither. For they shall be healed, and everything shall live within the, the river come. And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from Agadi, even unto in England. They shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea exceeding many. But the merry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on their side, this side, and on that side shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his month. Because their waters they, isu they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. The vision of the land. Thus said the Lord God, This shall be the border whereby ye shall inherit the land according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two portions, and ye shall inherit it, one as well as another, concerning the which I lifted up my hand to give it into your fathers, and this land shall fall unto you for inheritance. And this shall be the border of the land toward the north side from the great city, the way of Hadland has men go to Zihot, Zidon. Haman bethroated Sibram, which is between the border of Damascus and the border of Hama, Hazakon, which is by the coast of Haran. And the border from the sea shall be Hazarnan, Haz the border of Damascus, the north, north wind, the border of Hama. And this is the north side. And the east side ye shall measure from Haran and from Damascus and from Gilad and from the land of Israel by Jordan from the border unto the east side. And this is the east side. And the south side southward from Tamar even to the waters of Strife in Kadesh, the river to the great sea and this is the south side, so, south side, southward. The west side also shall be the green sea from the border, till a man came over against Hama. This is the west side. So shall ye divide this land unto you according to the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot, for an inheritance unto you, to the strangers that sojourn among you, which shall beget children among you, and they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel. They shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that in what tribe the stranger sojourns, there shall ye give him in his inheritance, said the Lord God. Chapter 48 Now these are the names of the tribes from the north end to the coast of the way of Hedlin. As one goeth to Hamlin, Hazran, the border of Damascus, northward to the coast of Hamath, for these are his sides east and west, a portion for Dan, and by the border of Dan, from the east side unto the west side of a portion of, for Asher, and by the border of Asher, from the east side even unto the west side, a portion for Natali, 
and by the border of Natali from the east side onto the west side, a portion for Mansa. And by the border of Mansa from the east side onto the west side, a portion of Ephraim. And by the border of Ephraim from the east side, even onto the west side, a portion for Reuben. And by the border of Reuben from the east side onto the west side, a portion for Judah. And by the border of Judah from the east side onto the west side shall be the offering which ye shall offer of five and twenty thousand reeds in breadth and in length as one of the other parts from the east side onto the west side. And the sanctuary shall be in the midst of it. And the oblation that ye shall offer unto the Lord shall be of five and twenty thousand in length and of ten thousand in breadth. And for them, even for the priests, shall be his holy oblation. Toward the north, five and twenty thousand in length, and toward the west, ten thousand in breadth, and toward the east, ten thousand in breadth, and toward the south, five and twenty thousand in length and the sanctuary of the Lord shall be in the midst thereof. And it shall be for the priests that are sanctified of the sons of Zadok, which have kept my charge, which went not astray when the children of Israel went astray, as the Levites went astray. And this oblation of the land that is offered shall be unto them a thing most holy by the border of the Levites. And over against the border of the priests, the Levites shall have five and twenty thousand in length, and then, then ten thousand in breadth. All the length shall be five and twenty thousand, and the breadth ten thousand. And they shall not sell of it, neither exchange nor alienate the first fruits of the land, for it is holy unto the Lord. And, and the five thousand that are left in the breaded over against the five and twenty thousand shall be a profane place for the city for dwelling and, the, and for suburbs. And the city shall be in the midst thereof, and these shall be the measures thereof, the north side four thousand and five hundred, and the south side four hundred and five hundred, and on the east side four thousand and five hundred, and the west side four thousand and five hundred, and the suburbs of the city shall be towards the north, 250 and toward the south 250 and toward the east 250 and toward the west 250 and the residue in length over against the oblation of the holy portion shall be 10,000 eastward and 10,000 westward and it shall be over against the oblation of the holy portion and the increase thereof shall be for food unto them that serve the city. And, and they that serve the city shall serve it out of the tribes of Israel. All oblations shall be five and twenty thousand by five. Twenty thousand ye shall offer the holy oblation four square with the possession of the city. And the residue shall be for the prince on the one side and on the other of the holy oblation and of the possession of the city over against the five and twenty thousand of the oblation toward the east border 
and westward over against the five and twenty thousand toward the west border over over against the portions for the prince and it shall be the holy oblation and the sanctuary of the house shall be in the midst thereof moreover from the possession of the levites and from the possession of the city being in the midst of that which is the princes between the border of judah and the border of benjamin shall be for the prince as the rest of the tribes from the east side unto the west side benjamin shall have a portion and by the border of benjamin from the east side unto the west side simon shall have a portion and by the border of simon from the east side unto the west side asasar asar a portion and by the border of Esar, from the east side unto the west side, Zubalan a portion. And by the border of Zubalan, from the east side unto the west side, Gad a portion. And by the border of Gad, at the south side, southward, the border shall be even. From Tamar unto the west waters of Strive in Kadesh, to the river toward the great sea. This is the land which ye shall divide by lot unto the tribes of Israel for inheritance. And these are their portions, said the Lord God, the gates of the city. And these are the goings out of the city on the north side, 4,500 measures. And the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel, three gates northward, one gate of Reuben, one gate of Judah, one gate of Levi. And at the east side, 4,500, three gates, and one gate of Joseph, one gate of Benjamin, one gate of Dan. And at the south side, 4,500 measures and three gates, one gate of Simon, one gate of Ishar, one gate of Zubalan. And at the west of at the west side of four thousand and five hundred with their three gates, one gate of Gad and one gate of Ashar, one gate of Natali. It was round about eighteen thousand measures. And the name of the city from that day shall be the Lord is there.
I'll cast on him my every care and wait for thee, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, may I thy consolation share till from Mount Pisgah's lofty height I view my home and take my flight. This robe of flesh shall drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize and shall Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill
Jesus to Calvary did go. His love for mankind did show. What he did there brought hope from despair. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how Isn't he, isn't he, beautiful, 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 isn't he, isn't he, Prince of Peace, Prince of Peace, Son of God. Isn't he, isn't he, wonderful, 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 isn't he, isn't he, counselor, counselor, almighty God. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just 
just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot O Lamb of God I come I come just as I am though tossed about with many a conflict many a doubt fightings and fears within without O Lamb of God I come I come just as I am thou wilt receive wilt welcome pardon cleanse relieve because thy promise I believe O Lamb of God I come I Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and renew a right spirit within